Happy Sabbath, family. I'm a little guy, right? Well, if God used Davis, right? That's how bar is. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for your love and your grace, your mercy, the way you don't give up on us. The way you pick us up when we fall, you clean us off, hold on to us. You're, you're just a loving father, an awesome friend, a great God. And so Lord, ask that a double portion of your Holy Spirit come upon us this morning and that you may speak to our hearts and to our minds. You know what we need to hear. And Lord, so I ask that you take over right now and may Jesus be lifted up. We pray in his holy name. Amen. I love superheroes. It is my confession. I confess. I love superheroes. Since I was a little kid, I used to love superheroes. I would uh, watch the cartoons of the superheroes, you know. And back where I was living, uh, we didn't have money to buy costumes like they have now, you know. Nowadays, the kids have it all. I used to have to grab a towel and put it around my neck. I take off all my clothes and I stay in my underwear. <laughs> and then I grab another underwear and put it over my head. That was my mask. And I run around the house and I go, Batman. <laughs> that was me. My little sister used to crack up at me. You crazy man. What I like about superheroes is they have superpowers. Each one of them has a different superpower. Some can fly, some can run fast. I used to like Batman because he was a thinker. He could think, you know, he would think of ways of doing things. And that gave me hope because I couldn't fly, I couldn't run, I wasn't powerful. But we can all think, right? I think. <laughs> I really believe that each one of us is a superhero for God. I really believe that these superheroes, whether it's Batman or Superman, their whole purpose is to help people, right? They go around saving people. And you and I have the privilege, right? To help the people around us. They have all kinds of needs. Some are physical, some are emotional. Everyone needs help at one time or another, don't they? A lot of them have spiritual needs. They don't know Jesus. And they live in this world and they deal with all the junk that they have to deal with. And then they look at their life and they realize that every day they get closer to dying, you know? And a lot of people in this world live hopeless. A lot of people in this world, there's so much pain as they deal with life and they deal about the future and they, 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 that's why they drink and they, and they do things to try to numb it. You know? We have been given, I gotta take off my jacket, I hope it's okay with everybody. I'm just a regular guy, all right? I told you that from the beginning. What was that? We have been given the gift of Jesus. And this world that we live in is not our home. We're here temporarily. And while we're living here, we walk with him in that hour of prayer, right? I saw that. I like that line. I'll say farewell to the hour of prayer. You know when you say farewell to the hour of prayer, you don't need to pray no more. You see him face to face. Amen? Come on, church. Superpowers? Yes, you do. You're 
smile is a superpower. A listening ear is a superpower. You know? I mean, it can be something as little as listening. It can be something as if you go and help somebody mow their lawn or cook a meal. Whatever it is, everyone has something. Amen? Use your superpower for Jesus. And what Jesus cares about the most is the people around. He loves them. He loves us. He loves them when they're stuck in their sin. He loves them. He loves them at all times, whether they're being obedient or whether they're sinning. He loves them. And he wants to reach them. And he wants to help them. Amen? Amen. Let us use our superpower to help people. Amen. Do you know what your superpower is? Ask God to show it to you if you don't. Some of you already know it. I got some people here that have built a house out of nothing. That's your superpower. You show people love by your actions. You show them that you care and you help them. And then you're receptive and opening to listening about Jesus. You help people with their physical needs first. You help people with their emotional needs first. And you gain your trust. You gain the, the opportunity then to share what's really important, the spiritual need. Amen? Amen. A lot of times we try to just go to a stranger and go, I want to tell you about Jesus, but they don't know who we are, and they got like these walls, dude. I mean, you come up to me, I don't know you, and you, let's, let, let me get to you straight. I'm chunky. <laughs> you can see it. It's all right. I used to be really chunky. No, I've come a long way. I used to weigh 310 pounds. So I'm a stud now, right? You think you're jumping out for me? I'm like, man! But if somebody came up to me and, and without knowing me, and they may have the cure for losing weight, you know, and they come up to me and they don't know me, immediately jump on me and start saying, you need to do this, you need to do that, wait. I look at them and they might be telling me good things, but they don't know me, I don't know them. They haven't earned the right, they don't have the credibility to talk to me in such a personal way. Spirituality is super personal. That is as personal as you can get. We have to build relationships with people because that's what Jesus did. He intermingled with people. He met their needs. He treated them with love and respect and compassion and kindness, whether they believed like him or not. Whether they were, whether they were living a righteous life or whether they were living a vida loca. Crazy <laughs> he loved them, he ministered to their need, and he won their confidence. Once he won their confidence, once they knew that he loved them unconditionally, people opened up, and then he was able to give them the word of life. Amen? Amen. He's our example. We learn from him, right? Going back to superheroes, going back to using your superpower for Jesus. We all have a superpower. And that's why I'm excited about being in this church. We're going to change this shift of thinking that we're a small little church. Amen. Amen. Remember what God did with Gideon and those 300 men? They mm. <laughs> destroyed. <laughs> They destroyed the enemy, remember? The thousands, I don't remember the story's numbers, but they were thousands of those 300 dudes! But they had God. Amen. They believed in God's power. You know, we got God. We might be small in number. I, I've heard some people say, I, I'm not, I'm too old. I don't believe that. Remember Moses? Yeah. And what he did? 120 years old, man, in the desert. I haven't been in the desert in a long time. I drive a car with air conditioning. I'm always in air conditioning. Come and think of it. I'm in air conditioning. 120 years old. But God kept him strong and God kept his eyes going. I forget the light of heaven. The, kept a light in his eyes, I think is what it says. And he just kept serving and trusting in God because the work of God is not dependent upon us. It's dependent upon him. Amen. 
So what is this superpower that we all have? If you have your Bibles, open up to 2 Chronicles, chapter, 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Second Chronicles chapter 7, and we'll be reading verse 14. This is very familiar text. You guys know it better than I do. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, are you God's people? Yes. Oh, church, you better be doing better than that. Are you God's people? Yes. You are. If my people who are called by my name, you're called by his name, you're Christians, followers of Christ, will humble themselves. Listen to that line. Humble yourself. Sometimes we think we can do it all. Sometimes we depend on our intelligence or our righteousness. I've been a Christian for many, many years. <laughs> humble yourself. Amen? When we humble ourselves and we realize it's not us, that our, 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 the best thing we can do is filthy rags. That's what the Bible says. That our righteousness is as filthy rags. Even in our best day, when we don't think we're sinning, it's as filthy rags. When we humble ourselves and pray and seek my face, we look for the Savior that our of prayer and turn from our wicked ways, not because we have the power to do it, but because God helps us turn away from the wicked ways. Amen. Anything positive in your life is coming from Him. Any power that you were able to overcome the sins in your life came from Him. Don't forget it. Don't take credit for what He has done in your life. Amen. That'll keep you humble. If it wasn't for Christ, I'd be back and doing the crazy things I used to do, right? It's Christ that's helping me. If we humble ourselves and, and pray and seek my face and turn from our wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. Are you starting to see the superpower that we have? Our superpower is that God hears us. Come on, church, you should all be jumping up and down. God hears you, man. Even though you feel unworthy. Even though the, the enemy points at you. did this and you did that. Why are you praying? You did this and you did that. Oh, you don't do nothing but you think this and you think that. Right? And you, and you could go, I'm not worthy. Praise God that he covers you with his blood. Amen. Praise God that when God looks at you, he doesn't see your sin. He sees Jesus. And he was perfect and righteous. You know who we need to be lifting up? It's Jesus. Because when I read the word, that's what's to be lifted up is Jesus Christ. We don't need to be lifting ourselves up. Now, I don't know you, so I can get away with murder because I'm not pointing a finger at you, you know? I don't know you, but we can't lift ourselves up, right? We lift up Jesus. We don't lift up a book. We don't lift up but one book. What is it? The Bible, the Word of God, that is the foundation. Do you understand what I'm saying? And it's Jesus. I'm not saying don't read other books. I'm not saying that God doesn't use other books. Don't get me wrong. Okay? I'm not. But when people come to us looking for spiritual things, we need to point them to the Word of God and to Jesus Christ. Amen. Because that's where the power is to transform and change people's lives. Amen. Do you understand? Our prophet said, she pointed to Jesus. She is a lesser light. He is a greater light. The reason that the horizon came out is when people weren't focusing on the word of God, they started pointing. You got to get the point by Jesus. You just started studying the word. Amen? Amen. Because Jesus is what changes people's lives. Amen. Jesus is the one that died for you. Yes. Jesus is the one that saved you. Jesus is the one that created you. It's all from beginning to end. Oh, 
back to the text. And when people pray, he will heal their sins and heal the land, right? Read the bottom end of that. Read, read the end of that verse because I need to pick that. Uh, the end of the verse? Yeah, the, the last couple sentences. Our superpower is prayer. Our superpower is that he listens to us. Amen. That's awesome, guys. You don't realize how big that is. Guys, are you serious? I'm not trying to insult anybody. This is not your thing. But when I was a kid, I used to watch Star Trek. Remember Star Trek? Captain Kirk and Spock. And the two of them were always laying on the planet. And they looked around and looked. So, I have a 
friend in college a long time ago. And uh, he went around, his job was a literature evangelist, basically went around selling books, right? And, uh, but he was a man of prayer. And I remember he would tell me, I pray every day that God will use me to, to help someone into the kingdom, he would say. Isn't that a beautiful prayer? Imagine if our family here at Brooksville, every day we wake up in the morning and say, Lord, use me today to lead someone to the kingdom, to help someone out. You think that God would make my answer that prayer? Yes. That's one that he has. If I ask him for a million dollars, he might say no. I tried. I'm still broke. <laughs> but he cares about people, and he wants to save them. And he'll give them a million dollars in the kingdom of heaven, and it really won't matter to the streets of Mexico. What really matters. So my friend says, I pray. And I, and, and I asked God to use me. So he told me a story. He is uh, he is tired. He's been going door to door selling boots. And he's driving back home. And he's driving. And he's tired. When you're tired, you're hungry. You want to go home. You want to get some food. You want to go to sleep. And he's driving. And as he's driving, just as he passes the door, the light turns on. Just as he gets there, the light turns on. And he feels an impression in his mind that says, God was talking to him. In his mind, he says, Go there and tell them about me. Hmm. Has that ever happened to you? Did you get like an impression? Did you feel like, like God? That's, do you know what I mean? Listen to the Holy Spirit. He wants to use you. Have you ever felt that way? Like it's time to say something? Maybe, maybe not. He felt that. And at first he wasn't sure if he was imagining things. Have you ever felt like you were imagining things? I, I struggle with that too. Right? I remember hearing that in my own prayer. And so he looked at the, he slowed down, he looked at the door, he looked Light. And he nodded, nah, nah, I'm just hungry. And he kept driving. He went halfway down the block when he felt the impression again in his mind go back to that house and tell him of me. What would you have done? A total stranger who knocked on their door, come on, I'm going. To the there, you what you That's the You know what I mean? So the guy's thinking about it. Yeah, now, Lord, you can answer that prayer some other way. I, maybe I'm just, maybe I need to just go home and eat some veggie wings. He keeps driving. He gets to the end of the block, and then he says this to me. I heard an audible voice. That was an impression. I heard an audible voice say, stop, go to the house, and tell them of me. When he heard that, he stopped. He turns around he drives up to the driveway. He's scared, but God sent him. So that gives him a little moment. Doom, doom, doom. He doesn't hear anything. Ain't nobody coming out of it. Well, I did what I was supposed to. He turns around. When he turns around, this big guy opens the door. Like six of six, big guy. But what scared my friend was the big one had a shotgun. Now that's scary. The guy's 6'6". Six, six. My friend was like, my heart. So that's just scared of right. But then was 6'6 six, six and a shotgun? But my friend noticed he looked into the man's eyes and he was crying. So he knew something was up. So my friend said to him, what's happening? What's happening to you? Why are you crying? And this big guy, instead of being proud and going, Nothing and walking away. He humbled himself and he told the story. I came home from work. And normally my kids are running around making a mess. And normally when I get home at dinner time, the house smells like food. No food. Nobody in the house. No noise. I looked around. They weren't home. And that never happens. They're always home. She's always home. My babies are always home. So he went to the kitchen, went to grab the phone to see and call around, see if she could find him. He could find her. And when he looked at the counter, there was a letter, the Dear John letter. And he opens up the letter, and the letter read something to this effect. We love you. You're our life. But you come home drunk, and you're a different person. And you're not that loving husband that cares for the kids and takes care of us. You come home and you're an angry drunk. And you beat us. And we end up bruised and bloody. 
And we don't know when you're going to finally kill us. And so we love you, but we can't live this way. We decided to go away. And this man loved his wife. This man loved his kids. I mean, there is his life. But, but he would get drunk. He would lose control. Okay? And he had tried out of his own strength many a times to stop because he would go home and after he sobered up, he would see the kids and the kids would go like this. He would see his wife all bloody and bruised up and, and she wouldn't talk to him and he knew he wanted to change and he tried but he couldn't do it because you cannot do it on your own. Let's cut it out. Let's stop thinking that we can do this probably the, the, the devil's biggest slide. You can be righteous on your own. No, you can't. You need the Savior. You need the Holy Spirit inside you. That's what gives you power. Amen. You're just a cell phone. You, it's beautiful. You can do, I have all these apps, and I can do all these things, and I can GPS, and you can check on mine, and you can check your Facebook. You can do all these things. Really, if you don't plug into the outlet, you ain't nothing. Amen. And God is the outlet. You know? And so this man, he says to himself, I don't want to live without my wife and my kids. And I can't stop drinking. I tried. So he goes to his closet and he pulls out the shotgun. He goes to his bedroom and he sits on his bed and he puts the shotgun to his mouth. He pulls, puts a thumb in the trigger and he put the, the shotgun in his mouth and, he, and then and he stopped and he goes, God, if you're real, God, if you can help me, I'm going to give you one chance. Send someone to me to tell me about you. And that's when Kurt, my friend, knocked on the door. Amen? Amen. Amen. He told him about Jesus. Kurt actually told him what God had done in his life. See, Kurt was a drinker also. God knows what he's saying, right? Kurt had messed up life. When I met Kurt, he, we were young, but he was older than the rest of the theology students. He had lived life. And, and had lived in a world of sin and was addicted to all kinds of things, and God saved him. And now, he didn't tell them about himself. He would tell them about what God had done for him. Amen? How God gave him the power to let go of that. How when he connected with the Father on a daily basis and spent that time in prayer and spent that time in the Word, somehow he felt God's power inside of him and it changed what happened. Amen? Amen. The people need the power of God. And you and I, we need to be connected to God. How can we share about someone we haven't experienced? How can we tell people what Jesus wanted? When our religion is not Jesus centered, it's about us and knowledge. Oh, I know, I read these books and I know this and I know that. Yeah, but it's cool, no? You know Jesus. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? Because you can be the most knowledgeable person when it comes to the Bible, the Spirit, of prophecy, or whatever, but if you don't know Jesus, what do you become like Pharisees? The Pharisees and the Sadducees and all these people in those times, the Levites and all these people. They knew the Bible backwards and forwards. They were putting in songs so that they could memorize it. They were quoting the scriptures all over the place from the name of God. I don't want to fall to that temptation, that, that, that scheme of the devil, where I know I go to church and I get my tithe and I say the right words, but I don't know the Savior. I don't have the power of God inside me. Do you understand what I'm saying? There's a difference. And the enemy uses the same old traps over and over again. Ain't nothing new. The enemy uses the same scheme. But we're going to have red parents and our red parents. He's going to go to us. Do I know the Savior? Is he the love of my life? Do I long to spend time with him, talking to him? That's what prayer is. It's really talking to him as a friend. Do I listen to him? You see, the most important thing in my life. If that isn't the case, let us ask God to make it the case. Amen? Amen. God's always working on us forever. I love it. So, 
His superpower, her superpower was what? He prayed in the morning, right? Asking God to use him to let others know, right? And that man with the shotgun, he used his superpower, didn't even know he had a superpower. He prayed, and God showed up. If you were to go back in time to Tennessee up on a hill, and you visited the Seventh-day Adventist Church up there, the guy that would open the door and welcome you in and take you to the seat was the six foot six dude. God converted him. He had a testimony. He could tell what God did. And then when he was young and scoring people in, he would come sit in the row next to his wife and his two babies. Amen? Amen. Is God good? Is God good? God is good. God has a lot of people he wants to reach. And we can have all kinds of we can have all kinds of advertising. We can have all kinds of seminars and bring in the best speakers in the world. But I tell you nothing. I have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in 25 years of ministry. And seen very little results from spending all kinds of money in advertising. And bringing these great speakers, but don't get me wrong, they're great speakers. I'm not saying advertising is wrong. But sometimes we depend on that so much that we forget what really works is what we're talking about right now. It's the prayer. It's the relationships. It's the one-on-one. -on -one. See what I'm saying? And each one of us can do that. We can pray for a couple of people and see God work his miracle. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to end with one more story. Can you handle it? We're a little over on time. I hope you forgive me. And we're going to have a nice, nice cake. Yeah, I, think I saw a case! <laughs> I love handles everywhere. <laughs> I'm back, baby, I'm back! <laughs> I remember when I graduated from Southern College, I used to call it Southern College like that. Um, we came down to a pastor's camp meeting, a pastor's meeting in Camp Colossal. All the pastors of the conference were there. I was invited because I was a theology student and they were trying to just check me out, I guess. And so I went to listen and I remember, I, I don't know if you guys remember the conference president, Elder Rexy. Yes, does that sound nice, Rexy? He played the piano, very enthusiastic. Um, and he preached a sermon that I'll never forget. He says, the way that Christianity We'll finish the work for Christ's coming. He said, there's only one way. And I, I, I was so, um, I don't know, you know, I'm a student, how, how do we do it, how do we do it? And I'm expecting some strategy, and I'm expecting, and we do this, and we do that, and I was expecting some plan, you know, some big thing, and I'm ready to write it down on my little notebook. And he did up there in a humble way, and he says, each one of us Christians is going to pray for two people.
When she found out that I was studying to be a pastor, she came to visit me and told me, You fool! She started calling me names. This lady used to take me to church when I was little. You fool! You're some of the divorce, you see? How can you follow that God? Curse God and walk away from Him! She told me like that. And that hurt me. Because I loved her, you know? And so I saw her situation, I felt bad for her. So I prayed for her, right? She stopped going to church, she stopped talking to the family, that everybody's Christians, she's just disconnected to the angry God. I prayed for her and said, Lord, please touch her heart. Our family had tried to reach out to her, she called all doors. And then I prayed for my cousin, he grew up in the church. When he was like 15, 16, he made a mistake. He sinned. And, and the pastor at the time, I don't know what they were thinking, instead of dealing with him privately, they opened it up to the entire church, and they made him stand up in front of the entire church, and they removed him from the church membership. And the kid, what the kid needed was help. He didn't need to be exposed and made ashamed. He needed to be saved. And so he said, I'll never. In his mind, he associated God with the people. And said, I'll never follow God. If, the, if God is like that, I don't have nothing to do with him. Can you get why he got the way he got? I get it. And the thing was, my cousin, who I love, another big guy, was huge, man. He was like, the best person for 500,000. He was huge. You look at me and arms up to here. My God! He was huge. He was like a body, like a, a bouncer. That's the kind of job he had. He was in gangs, okay? His life was in mean, He was into drugs. And, you know, you didn't understand the kind of guy he was. And so, and he was stuck as damn. That guy, you know, he was always. You know, no. It's <laughs> scary, it's scary. And, and uh, so I prayed. I prayed for those two. And I, and I drove home. I was in Cape Town. I was doing Orlando. Come on, we drive. When I get home, this is God. Listen to this book. This is God trying to teach a, a doubt in Thomas. So I share this because maybe it'll help you. I get home and my grandma's in the kitchen cooking. And she said, Robbie! <laughs> Your aunt totally called you. Just as I got there, this is a walk in the door. I haven't heard from her in a long time. She wants you to go over there. My grandma says, she wants me to ride or something. And, I, and it didn't dawn on me that a few hours before I had what? A few hours before I had used my superpower and your superpower. And it didn't dawn on me that I had eaten the spinach. You know what I'm saying? It didn't dawn on me. I thought she must be a buyer or something. <laughs> we should go to the grocery store or something. So I get in my car. And, and um, I didn't really get distracted. <laughs> what was I doing? Oh, the car, yeah. Oh, the car, yeah. So I get in the car and I drive to Trolley I think I didn't remember the name. And I'm driving over there, I don't know what to expect. And I knock on the door. Doom, 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 doom. And she comes and she opens the door and she sees me and she starts to cry and she puts her arms around me and says, Please forgive me Amen. for cursing you for following God. Amen. I've been, and she confesses, I've been angry at God. And I've been wrong. And the Holy Spirit has been touching my heart and telling me I need to come back to Him. Amen. Thank you guys. You should have seen how much said jump. I couldn't believe it. What? She started going back to church. She went to church and started praying and started walking with God again. Are you with me? Because of a prayer in that life. Are you kidding me? I wasn't even going to talk to her. I didn't have to like, try to convince her. Like, if I could anyway. You know, don't be mad at God. I didn't have to say nothing. Because when God touches somebody's heart, he goes what he's Amen. Amen. He's the doctor. Mm -hmm. So that's a Wednesday. Wednesday. I left Camp Blanco. I go to her house. Then I'm headed to church. I used to work with the little kids, the early teen kids in Camp Haiti. I'm sorry I went over to that. People are looking at me. But sugar metal, man, come on, come on, come on, come Sorry. I got excited. I go to church prayer meeting and I'm looking for kids, I'm thinking for the young kids, early teens. I'm up there telling stories in front of them. 
back door opens up. Comes in, boots, leather jacket, chains everywhere, bandana, tough dude, I'm telling you, tough. He was crying. Crying always shows emotion, I guess. It shows when God's doing something hard. Not always, but at the end of it. And I, I immediately, again, I forgot about the what? I forgot about the superpower. And my first thought was, he's here to tell me grandma that. He's here to give me the news. You know what I'm saying? So I, I stopped and I walked out into the school. I said, yeah. he took me out to the parking lot. He goes, I need to talk to you. He's like, okay, what's going on? And I said, Grandma died? <laughs> and this is what he thought. No, man, Grandma didn't die. <laughs> then, I, then I'm analyzing the whole thing. He came. He said, then he goes to church. He comes. He knows something. I didn't find out what is going on. I said, uh oh. Did you kill someone? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Maybe he came for me to hide him. <laughs> He goes, did you tell somebody? He goes, hey man, I didn't kill nobody. <laughs> so then I saw him and I started thinking, kill nobody, remember the guy? Are people trying to kill you? <laughs> Is somebody, you want me to hide <laughs> Go, man, no, I didn't kill nobody. Thank God. Then what are you doing? I'm in the middle of life. I ain't a wife. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't a wife, man. I'm a So I'm not with your money. What's going on? Why are you crying? And then he says to me, I had a dream. I was taking a nap and I had a dream. He tells me. This afternoon, I was taking a nap and I had a dream. And I thought, what kind of dream is this? He goes, what kind of dream did you have? He goes, you, me, and the family, grandma, and all of his family, we were at a picnic eating food. And we were, it was a beautiful sunny day, and we were all happy and fun, and all of a sudden, the, the sky got black. And there was lightning, and it was like a storm. And all of a sudden, the sky cleared up, and then you saw light, bright light everywhere. And then I saw Jesus, and I saw the angels. What a dream! And then I noticed that as I was looking up, the angels would come down and grab onto Grandma and took Grandma. The angel would come down and take Grandma and took Grandma. One by one, the angels were coming down to take each of the family members until he looked around. And there was no more family. And he looked up, and Jesus and the angels were gone. And then he said, he heard Jesus say to him, Give me your heart before it's too late. Give me your heart before it's too late. That's what they've got to do with me. And in a parking lot, I had the privilege of seeing him give his life to Jesus Christ, man. He's been serving the Lord ever since. A prayer at 10 o'clock in the morning for two people. And by the time it was 9 o'clock at night, both people had made a commitment to Jesus Christ. This is how the work gets done. The president was right. And he got that from Jesus. He would get up early in the morning and he would go out in the wilderness in the garden he would pray. And he prayed for us. Intercessory prayer is our superpower because it was Jesus' superpower. Amen? Amen. Amen. I don't know, but if we pray, maybe our pews will get full. Maybe we see him and maybe we don't. Maybe we pray and those family members of ours come to know Christ. And people at work, and people, you don't know, some little kid that you pray for in school, right? Do you know? You don't know how it's going to happen. Don't worry about the results. You just pray. Amen? Are you willing to pray? I'll pray too. Dear Jesus, thank you, Lord, because you're so good and you pray for us. You pray for us and your spirit touches us and saves us. Out of all the things that you could be doing in the universe, you right now stand before the Father praying and interceding on our behalf. That is the power of prayer. Thank you for giving us the gift. Thank you that you hear us and that you answer those prayers. Use us, Lord, as a church that believes in you, that trusts in you, that is a humble people that pray to you, that the world may know you and have love. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.